I'm on the north coast of Madeira in Porto Maniz this morning. A place where I recently watched a video from Nigel Danson doing some seascape photography. I bought his book, Seascapes. Very highly recommend getting and having a look at that if they're still available. Because it was a, a part of landscape photography which I hadn't really done any practice on. So what I'm gonna do this morning is steal his pretty much exact location and some of the tips that he shared in his video which I'll put a link to probably up there somewhere and um, try and put some of those teachings into practice. This is what I like to do quite a lot with landscape photography is learn from other photographers go to those same locations because I know they're going to look good they've done the planning for me in, in effect and well it is really hard these days to try and find a unique spot but for me a lot of photography is about learning and if I can go to a spot like this where I know somebody has done a couple of techniques so what I'll be trying to do is put these things into practice the short capturing the waves short shutter speed the the longer shutter speed to try and get some of the movement over the rocks and having a scene which is backlighted by a sunrise which should be coming up in about 35 minutes so i'm just going to get set up ready in good time to take some hopefully really nice seascape photos let's take a look at the photo that i'm trying to emulate here is Nigel's photo from Porto Meniz. On either side of the background focal point, we have these waves crashing. These are the short shutter speed shots, which I tried to get around one one thousandth of a second for. You can really see how having these waves backlit makes them look amazing. And you can see the different hues of bluey green, emphasize the details in the foam. They just look epic. Then in the middle, there are these black rocks. When the waves crash over them, the seawater drains in lots of different directions. This is where we want to use a longer shutter speed to make it look more opulent, like a Roman fountain. And lastly, the sun rising in the east and creating an awesome glow on the background focal point, creating atmosphere. I fell in love with this image when I first saw it and it made me wonder, why am I not taking more photos of the sea? Hence, I bought this book for inspiration and I'm making this video to tell you about how I acquire new landscape photography skills. Secondly, I recognise this photo out of the ocean. The rocks look very familiar, so perhaps I can do some extreme cropping and create something similar here too. Quick update, it is now quarter past eight. The sun came up half an hour ago, but that thick cloud that has come across the horizon has not let any of that beautiful sunlight come and light up the uh, subject in the background or backlight any of the waves so hopefully it's not a wasted trip and at the moment got my shutter on just trying to catch some fast shutter speed waves as they break just before this rock on the left but let me show you my camera and scene this will be a bit easier so what I'm doing is just waiting for a wave to break on the left hand side of the foreground leading rock and trying to catch it. There is some nice yellow light coming through onto the scene at the moment, but it's not quite what it would be like for a sunrise unfortunately. A little bit disappointing, but that's landscape photography for you. You are at the mercy of nature. Before I get into having a look at the photos that I took in Porto Moniz, I want to run through a little bit more detail about what I learned with respect to shutter speeds and shooting seascapes. Now some of this obviously I learned from Nigel's video, but I'm gonna summarize it in the way that my mind works. And I've written my notes here because I always have let me grab it. A notebook, I'm always learning and writing things in here. And when I write it down as scripts for videos, it also helps cement it in as well. So that's a little bit of my learning process, but I'm gonna read from my laptop now. So there were three categories that I thought made up 
good shutter speeds for seascapes. And the first one I've called super fast freeze frame. And this is um, one one thousandth of a second and faster to freeze the movement in the waves or whatever moving water there is. So this is what I did for three of the photos that I was blending, capturing the waves and the big splashes and the light just reflecting through it. What you want to do is not overexpose those either because you want to get the detail out in the very white foamy bits of the sea. So the second one is the texture sweet spot, which is what I've called it. And that's between 0.25 and two seconds, depending on sort of how fast the water is moving. And that'll help give a, a, that lovely texture in the water that you see in some of these top landscape photographers' photos. And a lot of the time through Nigel Seascape's book. Um, any longer than this, and, and you start to lose some of that beautiful texture and detail that comes from that moving water. And this is what I used to do all the time. I was taking photos outside of these three shutter speed brackets, and, and they just didn't look very interesting at all. So for that texture sweet spot, I would recommend having a three or six stop ND filter on hand in case you need it. And the last I've called ghost water. This is shutter speeds, 30 seconds, one minute and above. I've got a 15 stop ND filter and I used to take some eight to 10 minute exposures and you just get this real ghostly water scene as it just looks very ethereal. So this ghost water effect isn't what I was going for in this video. I wanted the super fast freeze frame and the, <laughs> say that 10 times fast, super fast freeze frame and the texture sweet spot. But the ghost water, the really long exposure is if you've got a very minimal composition, you're, just, you're making it in black and white and just doing something, something a little bit abstract, that's where that comes in. And in landscape photography, it's, it's the first two shutter speed brackets that you wanna be playing with, I think. So now that we've established that, let's jump into Adobe Bridge and have a look. Now I am in Adobe Bridge and I have selected all the photos which I took at Porto Moniz, right from before sunrise all the way through till about an hour after sunrise, plenty there. But I needed to select a number of photos in order to complete the composition which Nigel had first created. I'm gonna have a look at these four here. The first one, and I'll just slide this over so you can see a bit better. I really like the wave I caught here on this one and I wanted to include it in the image somehow. It wasn't quite as dramatic as the one Nigel had on the left hand side but I love the colours and the reflection of the orange light coming off the wave. So I thought, let's try and include it somehow. But this one was a fast shutter speed at 11250, and it was taken at 8 a.m., which was about 15 minutes after sunrise. So it was still a little dark, and I had to push the ISO to get the fast shutter speed. So the ISO on this one was 1600. Going on to the second photo, now this wave is also pretty epic and sort of in the right place in the composition, so I have to use this one, I think. Taken only 10 minutes after the first one, but the world was waking up pretty fast. So I, I, I halved my ISO to 800 and I still got the same shutter speed. So um, an extra stop of light in 15 minutes between the two photos. The third photo, I didn't really have much on the right hand side. Uh, so in Nigel's photo, he's got some lovely big splashes coming up over the, ro the rocks that are on the right and uh, they just weren't crashing and breaking over there for me. So I'm going to take this photo and see if I can steal this splash as it were and then move it across over onto the right hand side. We'll see how that goes in the next section. The last shutter speed is the middle shutter speed, what I just called the texture sweet spot. So this was taken around 8.36 in the morning, so about 50 minutes after sunrise. And you can see it's getting slightly less orange and a little bit more yellow. So that golden hour is just sort of tailing off at this point. 
and it's much brighter than the first couple of shots that I took. So this one's at ISO 100 and I could close the aperture down to f8. So the first ones are at f2.8 to try and get that fast shutter speed. The Shutter speed on this one is 0.4 seconds. So just about in that sweet spot that I was looking to try and get the lovely texture. I always used to use shutter speeds that were way too long when photographing water movement. And an important lesson I learned from this experiment is, is how to create these, these lovely textures and these, where the, the water's moving. Even on the left-hand side, where you can see the wave has been crashing, I've got the lovely textures, not just in the rocks, but in the sea as well. Now it's time to take a look at the Photoshop edits and let's just start talking about the raw edit first. So when I bring them across from Bridge into Photoshop, it brings it via Camera Raw. And for the four photos, I wanted to do some basic editing to normalize them. So the lens correction, the chromatic aberration correction, the white balance to try and make sure that the colors and tones of each image was very similar and also try and normalize the exposure across the four images and this makes them a lot easier to blend once I get into Photoshop. So I'm going to run through this pretty quickly. This isn't a tutorial for blending. I just wanted to show you a little bit of my process about how I put these together once I got home into the man cave. First off, I took two objects, here we are. Um, a fast shutter speed, so the main left-hand side wave and the long shutter speed. And then I brought in a mask with the long exposure. And then I also brought in the wave on the right-hand side and masked that in. And then I chucked in that extra wave for some reason. I'm not quite sure I like that or that it is, you know, it looks natural. Because what you want to do when you're blending photos together is try and make it look as natural as possible because you don't want other people to know that you've blended these photos together. And it might look a little bit unnatural, so I might have to fix that a bit later, but I haven't done it for this video. So before I fix the sky, because I was panning around a little while I was taking photos, and you can see there's a difference between that rather white sky from later on in the morning to the other sky on the left-hand side, which is obviously a bit more in golden hour. A couple of things for the sky fix, and I just, I, I cheated a little, I just stretched that uh, sky out. Sort of looks like this, and I've kind of got nearly there where Nigel was. I haven't got the massive splash on this on this left hand side um, and maybe those waves quite aren't as good but I've got a big splash on the right hand side which I've transposed across. Now unfortunately there's one thing that I'm missing here and that is the sun. <laughs> it was behind the clouds for the whole morning and unfortunately I missed that lovely golden hour light coming from the east which is over here on the right hand side of the photo which would have lit up then the right hand side of this rock and backlit these waves and giving it that beautiful glow, that glow that Nigel's got on his image. But that is mother nature at the end of the day. You win some and you lose some. So this was the blend, initial blend, and then I took it through to do some final edits. So this is the final blend again in this second file. And then I started doing some global edits, make it pop. Then I did some cleaning. So I can see some of the blend there wasn't quite right on the right hand side for this splash. So I cleaned that up a bit and I think that sort of makes that a little bit more natural. And then cleaning too, I did a little bit of stamp tool and a little bit of content aware fill because I felt that these rocks in the bottom were quite distracting. On Nigel's photo, he sort of crops it around here and he's got this huge wave on the left and a huge one on the right and it looks really nice. However, I felt that I was missing all of this lovely texture at the bottom here and I really wanted to try and include it. So in order to do so, I decided to get rid of those little rocks at the bottom. And then I added in a little bit of atmosphere and then a little bit of vignetting and then this is the final photo that I've ended up with. 
I quite like the tones. I quite like the composition, obviously, because it wasn't mine. <laughs> it was done by Mr. Danson. Uh, but the sky looks quite good. I managed to bring out a little bit of texture in there as well. Although I don't have that beautiful sun glow, which really makes pictures pop. The backlighting for the waves, which would have made them pop even more and, and warm them up a bit. It does look a lot colder than his image, but then it was not a sunny morning. But I've tried to give it that golden hour glow because the sky was sort of a little bit orange anyway. So this is my final image. I'm happy with the sky, the textures in the sea and the water over the rocks and the tones which I managed to coax out of what was a rather flat morning. But I'm only 80% happy because like I said earlier, I think the wave on the far left doesn't look natural. So here's another quick edit I did trying to remove that and making the other wave a little bigger. Now let's compare this to Nigel Danson's masterpiece. I have a great deal of wave envy. My sea was nowhere near as active as it was for him. And you can really see how I'm lacking the sunlight to backlight the waves, which adds so much more depth and life to the seascape. Not to mention my rather heavy and dull background rock in comparison. With all that said, I do prefer my foreground rock. And as a little bonus, let's see my super crop next to Nigel's out of the ocean photo. My shutter speed was 0.4 seconds and his 0.6. Not much difference in exposure time, but a big difference in the movement of the water in the frame. This was probably due to the sea being a lot more active when Nigel was there than when I was. I think learning water activity versus shutter speed will be a skill I'll only acquire over time with a lot of trial and error in between. Time to quickly summarize my process of learning landscape photography. One, Choose a photo that you really want to recreate and if you're lucky enough, travel to that location or travel to a location similar. Number two, and this, this one is more of a 1A than a two, so let's call it 1A. I watched Nigel's video from Madeira and got some really great tips about shutter speed and backlighting of the waves and not to overexpose the the, the image because then you'll lose the detail in the waves. So those were three big tips that I took from his video. So if there's something out there that exists that you can try and learn from before you go, do take that. So let's call that 1A and go on to two. When you're on location, get there in good time and set up early. That is key because you don't want to be rushing yourself when you're trying out new techniques. You want to give yourself a lot of time just to have a play around with different settings, shutter speeds, filters, just so you can try everything out. Number three, remember the shutter speeds. Remember the, the, the three different timings that I gave you and I'll put them up on the screen here now. Number four, properly curate the images that you've taken. As you saw, I took hundreds of photos while I was on location there for about an hour and a half and you really need to go through the photos and try and pick your best ones. And last but not least is step five, which is playing around with a stack of images in Photoshop. I spent a lot of time doing this. It is a trial and error process and you want to spend a bit of time to try and make the blend look as natural as possible. If you're not au fait with Photoshop, there are plenty of free resources on YouTube, but I was lucky enough to buy Mads Peter Everson's Photoshop for Landscape Photography course, which included some lessons on advanced blending techniques. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please feel free to give me a like and a subscribe if you don't already. That would really help my channel out and I would really appreciate it. Until next time, happy snapping.